Welcome back to Excelsior TV. My name is Wendy and I'll be your host for this episode. It's projected that specialty pharmacy spends will make up 50% of the total drug spend for health plans and employer groups within the next five years. Well, with those kind of numbers, we might want to learn a little more about specialty drugs. So that's the focus of this episode of Excelsior TV. So what constitutes a specialty drug? There's no better person to answer that question than Kim Forrester with Diplomat Specialty Pharmacy. Okay, Kim, so what makes a specialty drug, well, special? So defining specialty, that's a tough question because there is no standard definition of specialty pharmacy. There's no two health plans that have an identical specialty pharmacy list. Um, and it creates a lot of challenges um, in the marketplace because when you're trying to compare one specialty pharmacy program to another and you're looking at costs and outcomes, um, you really want to be looking at similar lists. And again, no one defines it the same. Um, most of us will say a specialty pharmacy product is an injectable, whether it's office administered or self-administered in a patient's home. Um, and usually they're very high cost. Um, so I think a CMS defines a specialty drug as anything costing more than $600. Um, that would add a lot of drugs probably to the specialty list that probably don't need all that additional management that it happens through a specialty pharmacy. So if we can't necessarily define a drug as specialty based solely on their cost, what other factors help to determine a drug as a specialty drug? So specialty pharmacy products typically are managing patients with really chronic diseases. They're very sick people. It's uh, oncology patients, cancer patients, it's patients prescribed or diagnosed with hemophilia, it's patients with multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, um, HIV AIDS, um, hepatitis C. There's a whole long list of you know, pretty nasty diseases that these drugs are helping um, to counter and improve obviously in the end the quality of life of that patient and then the longevity of that patient's life. So these drugs treat some serious conditions. Do they require a more hands-on approach to administering them? Um, specialty drugs require that additional patient care, that additional support from an education standpoint um, for not just the patient but the caregiver for that patient and then also um, providing that education back to the physician's office to ensure that when new drugs come to market that they understand appropriateness um, of writing that prescription and what type of additional testing has to happen and what patients um, are truly candidates for that therapy. Um, so within the specialty pharmacy space, all of that has to occur. You have to have that, that team effort of, of educating and support for that patient to ensure that they get the optimal outcomes out of the product. So it seems that you really need to have a robust system of education and management when dealing with specialty drugs. Now we can see why they're called specialty. I would imagine this highly managed process is especially true for something I've heard you mention before called limited distribution drugs. And what are they exactly? So a limited distribution drug is a drug that's approved by the FDA um, and either because of requirements from the federal government or requirements from the manufacturer to control inventory, they limit access to that product or that therapy to one or a couple dozen pharmacies. But if a drug is approved, why would a manufacturer or anyone else want to limit its distribution in such a way? A lot of times for, from regard to the FDA, um, the government wants certain data elements reported back to them to monitor effectiveness after the drug's gone to market. Um, from the manufacturer's standpoint, um, for them, they limit access to certain products or therapies to help them better manage inventory. That is great information. Thank you again, Kim. It is the goal of Excelsior TV to help you make informed decisions, lower your pharmacy costs, and be a resource for your team when it comes to better understanding pharmacy-related issues. Feel free to reach out to Excelsior Solutions if you have any questions about this content or just want to learn more about Excelsior. Thanks again for watching Excelsior TV.